Hi everyone, just wanted to make a quick video in relation to glucose measurements. Especially recently, I have been asked so many times uh, about measuring glucose, so the when and the how and what kit should I use. So just wanted to make a quick video uh, to show you what I tend to do and the things I tend to consider. So f first of all, we want to assess glucose levels in order to see how efficient our metabolism is. This is a very gross generalization. Um, however, it can provide us with a little insight on how well the glucose is, the glucose is actually disposed from our uh, bloodstreams. And a, a phrase uh, from uh, my Julian really, really stuck in my head. If you rely on insulin to dispose of your glucose, you are already in trouble. And there is a lot of truth in that statement. So insulin facilitate the shift of glucose from the blood into the cells. If glucose is elevated and is not a temporary elevation, so for example we eat, uh, we absorb substrates, so proteins, carbohydrates and fats, especially um, carbohydrates tend to affect our glucose level, but this in a healthy metabolism, this should be reasonably quickly disposed. So I did all sorts of tests and uh, normally within 30 to 120 minutes the glucose should be back to normal. However, however quickly this, this, this glucose seems to be disposed can be also used as an element uh, to assess health to a certain extents of course. So, first of all, I take measurements of glucose at very specific times. So, the first one I want to understand fasting glucose. So, the person, let's assume it's dinner the day before and doesn't feed during the night or drinks or etc. etc. And without having had anything, uh, measuring the first measurement in the morning fasting, this is uh, something that I tend to do reasonably often. However, um, there are, I take two readings of fasting glucose. So the first one is as soon as the person wakes up. The second one, normally within an hour, an hour and a half, still prior breakfast, so still prior any form of uh, stimulants like coffee, green tea, uh, or solid food, for example, breakfast. And at times, there is a quite a two. So normally, if the first one is higher, um, the person may have something called the dawn phenomena, meaning that the uh, glucose level in the morning, due to a couple of reasons, uh, sympathetic activation, very poor glucose drop during the night, poor night sleeps, and etc., etc., um, is actually raised. Normally, up until the body wakes up, and we believe there is a strong influence in, of, of cortisol to reduce the inflammation and consequently uh, allow less insulin resistance and then eventually uh, insulin being, the body being more sensitive to insulin would shift the glucose uh, into the cells, lowering the blood glucose level. So uh, Dr. Jason Fung uh, has written a really good article on uh, dawn phenomena. So if you were to Google dawn phenomena, Dr. Jason Fung, you actually find a, a very, a very good article. So if you want to research a bit more on that, that's fine. However, let's assume that we found uh, a glucose level that is pretty stable. So the two first readings, so first one as soon as someone wakes up and uh, just before breakfast, normally within an hour, an hour and a half from the very first one. Let's assume these are quite consistent. That provides a good benchmark to understand how well the body uh, actually disposes glucose and how, in a way, uh, we will relate that to, to, to future videos in relation to inflammatory response, which I'm working at present. So the other um, thing that we'll consider is preprandial and postprandial. So normally halfway through the morning, uh, after three, four hours, there's any food, they can also check what would be 
again, a similar fasting glucose level. The other measurements I take is given we know the fasting glucose, we can measure preprandial, so right before having a specific meal or foods, and then at an hour mark and two hours mark postprandial. This is quite important to understand one, what is the effect of the specific food on our glucose levels and how well the body actually deals with that specific load. Um, sometimes we find, for example, a meal uh, that has a certain amount of carbohydrates. But we change the type of carbohydrate, the reactions within uh, the disposal of glucose can be very, very different. So, for example, um, we can consider GI, we can consider GL, of course, um, but also within the GI, we need to make a few differentiations. So, for example, my body, uh, if I feed myself um, healthy grains, not gluten, nothing that would probably make me think that would react to these, so for example some rice, and I measure the glucose at one hour mark after I had this food, when I measure the same amount of carbohydrate from, for example, certain type of fruit, which it is normally considered higher GI, and it is, yet my body disposes that a lot better than what it would dispose grains. Through the years, I've found that grains don't actually fit everyone, and I seem to be one of them. Uh, I'm not suggesting everyone they should have a grain-free diet. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that through understanding of what are the glucose reaction, we can perhaps refine our uh, protocols or our suggestion to our patients much more precisely on a, an individual basis. So. The last measurement I would normally take is just before retiring, so we can actually compare that to the one in the morning. Obviously, <clears throat> there are different indicators that would, would, would perhaps have very different meanings. So, uh, a higher fasting glucose level normally is related to inflammatory response, pre-diabetes, and, and etc., etc. Um, if the body does not dispose very well of the glucose postprandial, could be in relation to the meal, could be in relation to an inflammatory response to some components of the meal, not necessarily and only the carbohydrates. So by taking several measurements at different uh, times and in different days, we can start to build a little bit more of an understanding on how the person metabolizes glucose. So. As a summary, very, very simple. Fasting glucose level, so we can take two measurements. The first one is as soon as the person wakes up, and then the other one an hour, an hour and a half later. These can be slightly different. If it's dawn phenomena, so if the first reading is much higher, and if the first reading is also quite substantially higher than the night before, then obviously we have an inflammatory process and a hormonal related process of increasing glucose level during the night. Then postprandial and preprandial, the difference between measuring the glucose as soon as just before we start eating and how long it's going to take to the body to get the glucose back to normal. So normally the hour mark is more of an indication for cardiovascular diseases, the two hour mark and diabetes, the two hours mark is more related to still both, but perhaps more onto the type 2 type of diabetes or metabolic syndrome. So, however, it is pretty important to see uh, what these glucose variations would be. And there are all sorts of charts available, um, you know, from all uh, different sites. Normally, diabetic sites will uh, will, will, will report these charts, and I'm going to uh, post uh, very soon a blog in relation to that. So, however, anyone with glucose, uh, fasting glucose above five on an ongoing basis, personally, I would start to look. Uh, five would also be the US and European 90. Uh, so, five millimolar is 90 milligrams per deciliter. So, um, yeah, anyone with constantly raised 
above that figure, then probably I would want to start to look into the inflammatory response. I want to start to look at sympathetic activation, stress response, and hormones. So this is something that I would definitely want to consider. Also, um, if someone, for example, would eat and start the day at a decent level, so perhaps in the fall, uh, which is around 72 in uh, US European uh, measurements, I would probably, that would be totally fine. And at the hour mark, if he's still in the high 90s or 100s, uh, low 100 or 110s, then okay, obviously the body takes some time to deal with that. If within the two hours mark, this is still reasonably high, then at that, at the same level, then probably there is something in that meal or in the way how the body disposes of that glucose and reacts to food in general that isn't quite working well. So I hope this is of uh, any help to any practitioners or anyone that is interested in understanding glucose and uh, I'll keep you posted on my new work that is coming out. Catch you later. Bye everyone.